When you mix fuel, metal oxide, and metal powder in just the right way, it burns at 2,000 degrees Celsius. Hot enough to cut through nearly any barrier known to man. Throw some C4 into the mix. And you've got one hell of a combination. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Hutch with Genuine Ludicrum logging in. Today's operator highlight is Thermite. I'm going to be going over his guns, gadgets, and gameplay tactics so that you are better prepared to use and play him and a little bit more knowledgeable about his weapons. The first primary weapon that you can choose is the M1014 semi-automatic shotgun. It's also known as the Benelli M4 Super 90 and was actually the first gas operated shotgun produced by Benelli. It's a modular weapon allowing reconfiguration of many features without the use of special tools. The tactical version of this weapon is widely used in law enforcement, government, and militaries. Capable of firing up to 25,000 rounds without replacement of any major parts, this shotgun is durable, ideal for a wide range of weather conditions and climates. Not to mention shooting people in the face when you come up on them after a breach. The next primary weapon that you can choose from is the 556 XI Assault Rifle. It is a hybrid of the classic AK-47 and AR type assault rifles. It's a completely modular design that allows you to customize the barrel length, caliber, magazine type, and stock configuration. It has a folding stock and an ambidextrous magazine release, bolt release, safety selector, and charging handle. It's an all-around versatile weapon, and it's perfect for thermite. It's actually my favorite weapon to use with thermite, and I choose it nine times out of 10 over the shotgun, unless I'm feeling a little bit frisky and want to get up close and personal with the enemy team there. Now on to the secondary weapons. The first pistol that you have available to choose from is the M45 Musuck handgun. It is a single action recoil operated semi-automatic pistol. Chambered for the 45 caliber ACP cartridge, its design was actually inspired by the M1911 design. This pistol has been the standard issue sidearm for the Force Recon United States Marine Corps Marine Expeditionary Unit since 1985. It works well as Thermite's go-to secondary weapon and it packs a big punch and has a high stopping power. And it's a great weapon to lead with if you go into a breached room that's a little tight and you feel comfortable using the iron sights. You can pull off some quick headshots with it. The second handgun available to Thermite is the 5.7 USG handgun. This semi-automatic pistol comes all the way from Belgium and is manufactured by some name that I have no idea how to pronounce. Fabrique Nationale des Armes de Guerrestal. Whatever, I'm going to go with that. It was initially developed as the companion to the P90 and uses the same 5.7 by 28 millimeter ammunition. Lightweight in design, it boasts ambidextrous controls, low recoil, and the ability to use body armor piercing rounds. That's pretty cool. I don't know if you've used this gun. I have used it for a little bit, and I actually prefer the Musoc, but I'll give it this. With the 20 round capacity that you have with this weapon, you can fire a ton of shots and you don't have to be as accurate as with the M45 Musoc and still do a fair amount of damage in a firefight. Thermite's main gadget, and that's what he's named for actually, is the Thermite Breach Charge or the Thermite Explosive Breaching Charge. This gadget is a pyrotechnic composition of metal powder fuel and metal oxide which produces a very powerful and intense heat in the small area that it burns. The gadget in the game is an integral part of any well-organized offense. And it goes without saying that Thermite is a necessity when it comes to leading a successful offensive op. Now onto the secondary gadgets. The first of the secondary gadgets is the grenade, or the frag grenade. This grenade is my main choice above and beyond the breach charge, which is the second gadget that's available for Thermite to use. So because so many operators can take a breaching charge with them, it's not really necessary for Thermite to tack that on, and it wastes the use of the grenade, which can prove very helpful in situations, especially when you're breaching into a room, and when you know you have the enemy cornered and can pick them off with a well-placed grenade. 
Now on to the gameplay tactics that I use when playing Thermite. When you're blowing a Thermite charge, I like to prime a grenade right after I've initiated the Thermite charge. If you can prime the grenade just right and throw it into the exact corner that you think the enemy is most likely to be in, you're going to get a high amount of kills just by using that well-timed grenade. Now when you're attacking, if somebody else on your team has breach charges, it's important to work with them so that you can breach from opposite angles at the same time. It causes a mass amount of confusion and it puts the enemy on edge, allowing you to take a win that much easier. Now thermite is integral to breaching well-fortified rooms, so it's important that he's played, at least by somebody on your team, every time you're attacking. It's also important when playing Thermite or when you have Thermite on your team that you're communicating with the team where that breach is going to take place. Especially when you have Thatcher working in tandem with him to disrupt any of the devices that may be blocking a breach from happening. So communication with your team is key to using Thermite effectively. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this episode of the Operator Highlight, Give us a big thumbs up and let us know what you think down in the comments below. If you want to see a specific operator highlighted in the upcoming weeks, let us know in the comments section as well. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this every week. This is Hutch with Genuine Ludicrim, logging off.